Assalamu alaikum, family. Peace, healing, and light. And welcome back to another episode of Healing with Angelica's podcast, where we discuss all things healing. And if you are new to the show, welcome, beautiful souls. Today's broadcast will be a special broadcast because we have a special, special guest joining us today, the Student National Assistant Minister to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Brother Minister Ishmael Muhammad is here with us today as we will be discussing today's topic, healing through submission. Now, before we get started on today's special broadcast, I would like to take the time to further introduce our guest, Minister Ishmael Muhammad. Student Minister Ishmael R. Muhammad was born June 21st, 1964 in Albuquerque, New Mexico to the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, the most honorable Elijah, Elijah Muhammad, and to writer, lecturer, designer, and composer, Tainetta Muhammad. Student Minister Ishmael grew up in both the United States and Mexico and speaks Spanish fluently. Student Minister Ismail holds the distinct honor and privilege of serving as the National Assistant Minister to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. As one of the minister's trusted and able helpers, he serves on a Nation of Islam Executive Council and aids in the administration of the Nation of Islam leadership structure and ministry. Student Minister Ishmael extensive background on the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad affords his audience the opportunity to examine man's connection, duty, and future as it relates to God through scripture of both the Quran and Bible. He loves his love for the human family has given him the ability to transcend the ethnic, racial, and religious barriers that have historically divided the people of the world. Minister Ishmael's passion, thought-provoking lectures has inspired thousands. Student Minister Ishmael has been, has been instrumental in the planning and organizing of events and conferences throughout the United States. As a skilled organizer, Student Minister Ishmael played a major role in organizing major events and conferences. He serves as one of the principal, principal coordinators of the historic Million Man March Student Minister Ishmael has been interviewed in a multitude of both national and international media and press platforms. Student Minister Ishmael served as an effective youth mentor, community advocate, and a broker of peace in gang conflicts. He offers spiritual direction and counsel to those seeking personal, marriage, family, and domestic conflict resolution. His dedication towards spiritual development and empowerment in youth has presented him opportunities to address and interact with youth in both private and public school systems. As an extreme gifted and capable speaker and aide to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Student Minister Ishmael has lectured in mosques, churches, prisons, grammar schools, college campuses, and other educational institutions across the country. Student Minister Ishmael has traveled throughout the world to Africa, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, New Jerusalem, Asia, Europe, New Zealand, Central and South America, and Canada and the Caribbean. His diverse background coupled with his compelling and passionate deliveries are sure to positively touch anyone who hears him speak. A loving husband, father of eight, and dedicated minister and student of life, Student Minister Ishmael R. Muhammad stands as a fine example, role model, and powerful voice for the uplift of fallen humanity. Minister Ishmael, it is such an honor and a privilege to have you here on my show today. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm fine, and I salam alaikum to you and your audience. Thank you for extending to me the honor and the privilege to be on the show. Looking forward to the discussion. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praises is due to Allah. Now let's get started on today's topic, healing through submission, a healing journey to oneness with self and Allah. 
And please, for my audience today, do not hesitate to put any questions you may have for our special guest, Minister Ishma Muhammad, in the comment box below. Inshallah, we will try to get as many questions as we can. So today's topic stood out to me the most because it wasn't until I heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught and demonstrated by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that the healing first began with spiritual and then the physical started to take place and gradually proceeded. Once I joined the nation of Islam in which from that point, I decided to submit my will to do the will of Allah, now leaving behind the life engaged in activities of death and coming into a life engaged in activities of purposeful living. And that brings me to my first question for you, Minister Ishmael. In your own words, how would you describe healing through submission? <laughs> healing, <clears throat> or the process of healing is one of restoration, repair, and to become whole and sound. So we have, as Muslims, Islam, which means entire submission to the will of Allah. There was a time where the original man did not suffer from the spiritual impairment and also the physical ailments, sickness, illness, and disease that we see on our planet. But because of rebellion, to God and deviating from his path and rebelling against the rules, the laws, the statutes, the commands, the direction and instructions that Allah has given to us to live this life and to live it fully and to enjoy life, not just for a short term, but for a long term. So obedience and submission to Allah is the key to healing. It's the key to repairing ourselves, bringing us from an impaired uh, condition to an unimpaired condition that we may have peace in our life, happiness and joy in our life. It all depends on the degree and quality of our submission to do the will of God or to obey God doing his will is obedience to God, but to be in harmony with nature's law, to be in accord with the laws that govern this universe, that's the key. And that's why we thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Fard Muhammad who came to guide us and to put us back on the path that we strayed from or were taken from through circumstances and conditions, fulfilling what the scriptures say about him. He came to give us life, that we would have life in abundance. So healing is the key when we submit. As the title of your show, Healing Through Submission. Is that the topic? Yes, sir. <laughs> and that's not easy. 
You would think it's easy, <laughs> but all of us know there's a struggle involved in obeying God's commands, living the life that he has ordered and directed for us to live. So we have been given the greatest guidance that could be given at any time in the history of man on our planet, particularly after our 50,000 year father Shabazz, who took us into the jungles of Africa, that was a form of rebellion because he had an idea that the 24 scientists were not in agreement with. And then after being in uh, Sub-Sahara for 50,000 years, another god was born in Yakub, and Yakub has brought in a world contrary to the will of God. And after the 50,000 years and the 6,000 years within that 50,000 years, we have the coming of our savior, Master Fard Muhammad to restore us, redeem us, and put us back in an unimpaired condition. Hmm. All praise due to Allah. Beautiful answer, Minister Ishmael. Thank you for that. Thank you. You know, there's a scripture, Sister Angelica. I was thinking about you and the show uh, on yesterday or the day before. And I was inspired by your show and the topic because I have had a subject that I've had in the can for several <laughs> months now. And it deals with self-healing. And I want Allah willing when I have the opportunity to talk about how one heals oneself through faith. And this man whom we have in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it is written that Elijah had healing in his wings. That's so powerful, so yes. beautiful. But if you notice all of the people that came to Jesus with various ailments, their faith healed them. And I was reading in the table talks of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, how there were sisters who could not have uh, a child or get pregnant. And they would, they wrote the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and he told them within a year that woman would become pregnant and it happened. Mm. And the thing that he said that is so profound, he said, if you believe in Allah, then Allah in so many words, will make it happen. And that's the way the woman who had the issue of blood, he said to her, thy own faith has healed you. So the degree of our faith, the quality of our faith is so critical because if there is just a little bit of doubt, we can rob ourselves of that power 
to affect healing. Now that does not mean that in all cases, in all matters, in all conditions, particularly on the physical level, those of us who are afflicted with cancer or afflicted with other ailments, that we will just be miraculously healed like that. But it does say much about the power of faith because faith is a tangible yet intangible power. What do I mean by that? Paul said faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence unseen. Now in the study of physics, and I, I, I won't be long, it is the study of material or physical matter and its interaction with energy. Mm. So that tells us every cell is charged mm. with an electrical current. So the stronger one's faith is, they are activating an energy that's already present within our bodies, that's already inherent in the very cell of life. Mm. So that's why the power of thought is the greatest power in the universe, for thought shapes matter, and thought brings things into reality. So the believer in Allah must have faith, unquestionable, uncompromising trust and confidence in Allah who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. So we just don't send our signal out in a prayer as though there is no uh, receiver mm. to receive our transmission. When If I text you, it's because I know you're alive, you're present somewhere on the planet, and that's why I reach out to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the same process is involved when we make our prayers to Master Far Muhammad in the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Our prayers are heard, our prayers are received. And we must never doubt that when we make our prayers and why it's important to not leave your prayer without our shahada. I bear witness, there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. That's important, that's key. And I close with this one. <laughs> Jesus said, ask of the Father whatsoever you want in my name, having no doubt in your mind, and he will answer your prayer. So the prayer is a part of the healing process, but a prayer that is transmitted that is not just a signal going out in space mm -hmm. where we're hoping for someone to pick up the signal, receive the transmission. You are sending your prayers to a human being who is God, who hears the prayers of his servants. Sorry for that long 
answer. I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. That listen, that was beautiful, and that was not long at all. I needed more of that. <laughs> all praise is due to a lot. Oh my God, that was so beautiful. And I'm so glad that you touched on faith. You know, um, when I think about when I thought about the um, topic of this episode, healing through submission, um, as we know, submission is is hard. But within that submission, you have to have the faith to know that you can walk on that journey. And I believe that's what it was with me, just being convinced and knowing that my God is real. He's alive and knowing that I can I can get through anything. So all praise is due to a lot. Thank you for that beautiful answer, Minister Ishmael. <laughs> Thank you. So I want to um, go ahead and um, go to one of the, some of the questions that I have here from a few guests that submitted questions in regard to this topic. Um, now you did speak on previously about energy. And um, there was one question I have here that, um, talks about that and um, I would like to get more um, into this question. There's a question here from um, Brother Man, I'm, I'm probably going to say his name wrong, Manikai from Brother from the East. <laughs> he said, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Student Minister. Thank you for taking the time to be on this program. Sir, a few years ago, you did an interview with Brother Dr. Akili Muhammad. In an interview, you told us that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that in the year after we will not, in the years after we will not have doctors as we know them today, but we will have healers who will heal by moving energy throughout the body. You also spoke about magnetism and crystals and the chakras that you, that your dear mother Tynetta taught on. I am a Muslim who practices and teaches Holy Fire Reiki, and I was wondering if you could further elaborate on the importance of us as Muslim learning energy healing and becoming proficient in them. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> I'm not a student of those particular healing modalities. I know something about crystals and the energy that crystals um, emit. I know a little bit about the chakras and different things, but what they all involve is the movement. Magnetism is the movement of energy, energies that get trapped in the body, energies that get, if you will, stuck, that it needs to move. If you notice, life is characterized by motion, flow. There has to constantly be flow. So when anything becomes stagnant or still, it is now in the process of death. So movement is what these uh, different therapies or healing modalities, if you will, that's what they offer is the movement of the energy so that you can have flow. The blood circulates through the body. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that as it takes approximately a nearly nine minutes for the light of the sun to strike the earth, it takes that amount of time for the blood to make a complete circulation throughout the body. So what you have of the circulatory system is the flow of blood. And any time that there is blockage or calcification or building up uh, of uh, the substance and the arteries, the restriction 
of the flow of blood causes disease mm. to set up in the heart. So everything is dealing with flow, a flow of energy. I think that as Muslims, <clears throat> as students of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Sister Angelica, in the Supreme Wisdom Lessons, we are out ask the question of the meaning of civilization. And in that answer, it's telling us about not just the pursuit of happiness, knowledge, wisdom, but it's telling us something about pursuing knowledge in everything of life. So there are many things for us to learn and that's why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, seek knowledge, even as far away as China. So there's something to learn about life that scriptures is not the complete or the totality of knowledge. There's science to learn. And the Quran speaks to astronomy. It's speaking to biology. It speaks to chemistry and physics and all of these uh, disciplines and science. So I think the you know, answer to the question, a Muslim should pursue knowledge and learn of these, um, we could call it a, uh, ancient ways that modern medicine does not uh, introduce, but modern medicine is learning more and more about these other therapies and the benefits of these different therapies as they are now incorporating uh, Reiki, they're incorporating, um, I forget the name of the other, as a part of uh, uh, healing for patients that are suffering from various ailments and sickness and in their recovery. Hmm. So we, we should learn, but don't abandon or go into one field and get stuck there. We are to be like the bee. And we have the chapter 16 of the Quran, the B. So we go and we draw from all of these flowers, but we bring it back to the hive. So you, we draw the nectar, we go and make the sweet honey. Mm -hmm. So we are always to gain knowledge. And that was the beauty of my mother, Mother Tynetta. She traveled all over the world and whatever she learned, she brought it back to her people, back to our community, but she didn't stay there. Mm. Some of us in our pursuit of knowledge, we go to another house of knowledge and then we end up settling there. Well, that's not the best thing to do. Take the knowledge like you go to college. You don't stay in college. You don't stay in the university. <laughs> you get the knowledge and then you apply that knowledge and use that knowledge for your benefit. Thank you for the question. Oh, praise due to a beautiful answer, Minister Ishmael. Thank you for that. Um, it just kind of, I'm glad you, you said that because you're right. We do get to a point where we, you know, seek knowledge of these different um, types of ways to heal or whatever the case may be. So, but sometimes we may um, get stuck in that and forget what the true mission is and where the true healing is. And that's with a lie. So all praise due to a lie. So I do have another question for you. Um, why is attaining spiritual healing prominent? for everyone, and especially for the black man, 
and women. One day I was traveling with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in Mexico. And I don't know how the question came up. I can't remember what we were talking about, but the minister said, son, do you know what it means to be spiritual? I said, no, sir. He said, there are many who claim to be spiritualists, but they're pseudo-spiritualists. He said, to be spiritual means to be in tune and sensitive mm. to all of God's creatures from the tiniest insect that you can look at that ant or look at that bee or look at God's creature and begin to feel, he, these are not his words, the pulsating rhythm of life in that creature. So spirituality is not being religious. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Religion gives to us a set of practices based upon fundamental beliefs. Religion introduces you to God, but religion gives you what I would call these exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Prayer, fasting, charity, and that's all to build up discipline and to establish the connection to your creator. Hmm. But some people say they're religious. Well, what do you mean? You pray a lot, you fast, but well, what's the condition of your heart? Hmm. There are a lot of people who pray a lot, but they don't feel the pain of their fellow traveler on this earth. They are a lot of people who fast. But if you do all of these things, you're only sitting as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us in the study guides, in self-negation. It's for yourself. Then it becomes an exercise in vanity. Mm -hmm. But spirituality is being deeply, deeply sensitive to the hurt, to the pain of your fellow human being. To be spiritual means you pick up sounds, you pick up thoughts, you pick up the energy. Sometimes it's negative. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. again, it's part of connecting us back to the flow of the universe, mm. as my mother would say, the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But in the word spiritual or spirituality, you have spirit, you have energy. Well, how do I become spiritual? It's in my relationship communication and connection with Allah. Now, that is a spiritual experience, mm -hmm. not a religious one, a spiritual one. So you have this four-letter word, love. What is love? See, the minister said, it's a deep, creative force and it is the greatest power in the universe when you love you're spiritual but you cannot love without god so the scripture says god is love yes. when you have god you have love if you have love you have god but it all is attained in our communication and relationship 
with God, with Allah. That's being spiritual. The spiritual person is not proud. The spiritual person is humble. For you can tell the righteous, for they walk the earth in humility. The spiritual person is so in tune. They have that sixth sense. They have that third eye. They are deeply connected with the different forces that are unseen. Mm. So spirituality, it starts with the relationship with God and guess where it comes from? His word, mm. his word. And the more we fall in love with his word and have faith in his word, and the word is food for the nourishment of the soul itself. Mm -hmm. And that's why prayer and fasting, they have benefit. But if the thought is not on the God, then your prayer may be nullified. Your fasting, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote in How to Eat to Live, he said, if your thoughts are negative, if your thoughts are wrong, then there's no benefit in the fast. Mm. That's showing you again how powerful thought is. That is the beauty of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's a spiritual leader. You could say he's a religious leader, but no, he's a spiritual leader because he can affect a healing on the individual, on the person that's in front of him, a spiritual healing to all who hear him because his love is so deep that he feels the pain and the hurt and the struggle of the human being. So he offers a word from Allah that goes deep into our heart. Mm. It's really beautiful. We have to become more spiritual, less religious, more spiritual. And when we are more spiritual, we're more sensitive. We're more in tune with one another. We're more in accord with the will mm -hmm. of Allah. That's the highest level, or I would say the greatest reward and benefit of submission and obedience. But remember, we have to always have the desire to please Allah. If there is no desire, there's no feeding of the will. As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us, desire feeds the will. So every day, a believer's thought is on pleasing Allah, pleasing him. That's so important to the faith journey. Because if you say you believe, but you're just, uh, you have a little measured improvement <laughs> after 10 years or 20 years, but it's not reflected in character. It's not reflected in your interaction with human beings. You're still foul. Mm. <laughs> You're still ugly. Mm. <laughs> and, and you say the name of Allah, but you, what, what's missing? Mm. And that person will swear they're keeping their duty by making Fajr prayer, 
and fasting three days out of the month, eating one meal every 24 hours. And I'm sure I'm not, there's no reflection on any individual, but <laughs> some, some are walking around and thinking that Allah is pleased because you're doing that. Mm. But where is the growth? Where is the reflection in your countenance? Mm. Do we hear it in your word? See? I, I don't want to go any further. You got me inspired. The question oh. is great. But this Ooh. is, this. remember, our, we've got three stages that the Quran teaches of man's development. The animal or primitive stage, mm -hmm. where that's where we're where we are. Then the next stage of development is the human stage, where man learns uh, a, a mor morality mm -hmm. or good morals, and begins the development of character. And the last stage of human development is called the divine. See, now you're moving up now to the highest level. So I can borrow a word from my mother of thought and frequency where you're just so intoned. Mm. See, I don't have to tell you to do good. It's your nature to do good. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has said to us, see, when the Quran says, do no favor seeking gain. Yes. See? But good should be the second nature of a believer. I don't measure doing good, whether this person is going to accept it or I'm looking for for, for someone to reciprocate to me mm -hmm. what I do for you. See, most of our relationships are conditional like that. Mm. But that's not the way of God. He lets the sun shine on the just and the unjust. And he feeds the just and the unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous from the earth that we live on. That's why he's called the beneficent, the merciful. He's always doing good. Mm. And his mercy abounds. It's undeserved. It's the unmerited favor of Allah. But guess what? We are to be like him. Exactly. And that's that's what stunts our growth. And I hear sometimes us saying, well, you know, that's Allah. That's the messenger. That's the minister. I'm not like that. Well, obviously you're not. But you're also saying that's not your desire. Mm -hmm to be like him for the Christians say to be Christ like we have to be more like him who was given to us as an example now we're becoming more and more whole sound and if you will spiritual completeness mm. That's when you are at total peace. Yes. Because I can rest my head at night knowing that I did not uh, ill affect any human being with anything negative from my lips or in thought. And even those that did me wrong, uh, I leave it to karma. <laughs> I leave it to the law that no one escapes. Whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall 
he also reap. And as thou has done, so shall it be done unto you. See, that's leaving. See, nobody escapes the laws, but we want to exact punishment. We want to exact justice to an individual. And we don't have patience on God. And that's when our faith is really tested. Mm. See, our, relation, uh, our faith is actually tested every day in our relationships. <laughs> now, now, try that. See, <laughs> they're tried in our relationships. How will you respond? How will you act? How will you react? See, to this, that, or the other. Hmm. That's when the real character of a believer is manifested. It's manifested in relationships and it reveals the quality of our faith and our love under adversity. Not when times are good, but it's when negative things come into our life that's when we can measure the quality of our Islamic life, our character, and the quality of our hearts. I just thought I'd throw that in. I, <laughs> I, I don't know if you, you know, you, you, you invited a preacher on, on your show, so... <laughs> Listen, Minister Ishmael, that you was on fire, and I have no problem with you carrying on. So that was beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for it. It's like, oh, you, you, you gave so much meat just in that one question. I just want to, oh, keep going. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. And if you all are enjoying this episode just as well as I am, please show your support by donating today to Cash App Dollar Signs Healing with Angelica to help sustain future episodes just like this. Also, if you all enjoy all of the broadcasts here on Closing the Gap Broadcast Network, please show your support by donating today. Information to donate will be shown on the screen below. I love you all. Now let's get back to today's episode, Healing Through Submission with Minister Ishmael. Muhammad. So I do have a beautiful question here by a brother named of Tony Muhammad. He stated, give me a moment. He said, Asalaamu Alaikum, Brother Minister Ishmael. In the 12th chapter of the book of Mark, there is a reference to when the people heard Jesus, they received him gladly. If you can discuss how listening to the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is related to the healing of our people. The reason that the people received Jesus gladly, the poor received him and his message gladly, is because in the message that the Messiah gives is one of hope. Mm -hmm. That's number one, hope. Because he's not speaking to a people who have been taken advantage of. He's speaking to a people who have been oppressed, mm -hmm. trodden underfoot, neglected. So Jesus comes to embrace all those, as the scripture says, that are heavy laden. He's inviting them, come, come. I will give you rest unto your soul. My burden is light and my yoke is easy. Wow. Come, follow me. They received him because of the love that he demonstrated to a people who had not been loved. 
properly. He cared. See, he was attentive. He was sensitive. Hmm. So his word resonated in their heart and in their soul. Hmm. And they have not heard the sweet sound of such a voice before God raised Jesus from among them. This is why the people receive his message gladly. It was because they had been so neglected, mistreated, abused, denied the principles of freedom, justice, and equality. So his message encapsulated mm. everything that was missing in their life. And that Jesus is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Why do the masses come out to hear the minister? Because the, his word is so clear. Mm. The truth is so um, self-evident. Yes. And he's offering to us the way that we should go that would heal us of what we have suffered under 400 years, 463 years now, nearly 500 years. Mm -hmm. And once that message is accepted and applied, that's the key to the healing. So, there's the, the scripture. Is there no balm in Gilead? Gilead? Is there no physician there? Jeremiah the prophet asked, why is not the daughter of my people healed? Hmm. Then it comes right back. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician there. So God gives to the people one who is described as a physician, as a doctor, who is offering a medicine, but in as much as your condition can be diagnosed when you go to a doctor and he prescribes the medication. If you don't take the medicine, mm -hmm. <laughs> your condition will yes. not improve. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I run into a lot. I, I remind different brothers and sisters that I know uh, struggling with diabetes or hypertension and high blood pressure. Are you taking your medicine? Oh, brother minister, not at, take your medicine. Take your medicine. Well, I don't like taking them. Well, neither did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, neither did the minister. The minister. Mm. They are our examples. Yes. So you got a condition that needs to be addressed. So if we don't take the medicine that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has given to us in this in, in the teachings there's not going to be improvement in our condition. So the Quran tells us, um, uh, Allah does not change the condition of a people until what? The people change their own condition. Mm -hmm. The change within themselves. Well, if how can Allah say he doesn't change the condition of a people until they change their own condition, but the people can't change their own condition without help, without assistance. So Allah intervenes in the affairs of the people. He raises one from the people. Now you can change your own condition. 
And it's on you to change your condition after Allah has hmm. shown his mercy and his grace and his love to you and me. Now it's on us. And if you don't take the medicine, if we don't follow the teachings and the guidance that Allah has given to us in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and your condition has not improved, mm. now you're going to blame it on Allah? Mm. No. No. When I have to counsel in marital issues, domestic uh, problems, the one thing that I find is that we're not taking the medicine. Mm. Because when our relationships, our marriage, our family, and our home is set up properly, that creates the atmosphere that Islam produces, then there will be less conflict, less quarreling, less arguments. But when we are not praying as a family, see? What did the Christian say? If we what? Pray together? And I'll say pray together. We what? Stay together. Stay together. Yes. <laughs> so our condition is a direct reflection of whether or not we are following, obeying, and submitting to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Ooh. Brother Minister Ishmael, you're bringing the fire. <laughs> I can listen to you for hours. I swear I can. Praise be to Allah. I'm very <laughs> humble. We have a great teacher and teaching in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. And you can tell, see, because we are communicating as the minister talks to us in closing the gap on the highest frequency. Mm. We're conversing and discussing and um, turning over mm. a revelation of Allah through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when our conversation is on him, on the teaching, our tone level, our energy level, everything yes. rises and goes up. But when we start speaking on low level frequency, mm. black talk, gossip, slander, oh, this, this impairs our ability to communicate properly. Yes. So I, I, I thank you. I, 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 I'm, I'm very honored. I'm very humbled. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Praise be to Allah. I do have one more question for you before we end today's show. I hope that we can probably come back for um, a second part because I still have so many questions to ask you just in regards to my healing. Honor, Sister Angelica. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job and I'm honored to be on the show and I, I will uh, make time to come back. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll praise due to this a This is a live show? Yes, it's live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I we are it. live. I thought it was being recorded and then you were going to air it uh, later. <laughs> no, sir. We're live. <laughs> Do you get a decent audience at this time of day? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> do you think you would get a larger audience by hosting it in the evening? 
as opposed to midday? Or you're trying to catch people who go out to have lunch? <laughs> yes, I, I'm trying to stay in that and also just trying to work out just my schedule. So right uh, now, that's where it's where it's kind of been at. But I am seeing that the later hours are fine uh, as well, um, catching people off work. But we also have another broadcast that sometimes comes on on Closing the Gap broadcast around that same time. So that slot's kind of filled up. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what city are you hosting this program from? I'm in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, right here in the Midwest. Yes, sir. Dayton, Ohio. Great <laughs> city. I just saw Brother Lance Muhammad <laughs> in Columbus, Ohio a few weeks ago. And great city, dear sister. Please give my love and greetings <laughs> to the believers there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will. Praise be to Allah. I did have one more question before we end the show because we are live. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> I thought you knew that, but it's okay. <laughs> so one more question before we end um, today's beautiful program. Minister Ishmael, you were so fire. So I love it so much. Now, my last question here for you is how does and I want to tap in on this because, again, we 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 hear, but do we really obey? Um, how does oh, how does disobedience to a lot in His will hinders our spiritual healing journey with a lot? Well, that's an easy answer. <laughs> how does it hinder? Well, if you disobey, you're going to suffer the consequences of disobedience. So it hinders us. It stunts us. We lose favor with him. So this, there's always a price to pay for disobedience to God. Only his mercy can intercede that can mitigate the effect or the consequences of disobedience. Mm. And Ooh. that's why, because of his love for us, I'm talking about the Savior now, and throughout the Quran, Allah is most merciful. So he's patient with us. Mm -hmm. And it does not mean that we will not suffer at all from our deviation or rebellion. And of course, there are degrees mm -hmm. of rebellion. We are taught to eat one meal a day. Well, I may have had some breakfast this morning. Okay, not so bad, but it's still not following the strict dietary law. There's going to be a consequence on our health. Okay, then there is disobedience, which is the worst form of disobedience, is when we're in total rebellion to God, meaning you become an opposer to God and his will. And sometimes it's very subtle. For instance, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us certain things to eat, certain things to stay from. He's given us really a diet that if followed, we will not gain excessive weight. Mm. But you have those of us who feel that they know 
a little more than Elijah Muhammad, the doctor. <laughs> mm. So they will come behind what the Supreme Doctor has given to us with what somebody else has said from their studies. Yeah. Now you're challenging God. Now he's, he's not the best knower in A, B, C, D, E, F, you know? So there is rebellion that's manifested in our challenging hmm. what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us on certain things. And it's very subtle, but I hear it from us sometimes with coffee, with milk, different things. Well, you know, uh, coffee's not good for you. Who, who said that? Hmm. <laughs> Did Elijah Muhammad say coffee is not good? Well, the caffeine is not good for you. Who said that? Did the devil say that? <laughs> or did God say that? See, it starts mm -hmm. right there, you know? And it... Are you there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I lost you for a minute. So we have to be very careful. Very careful that we don't fall into rebellion of that type, of that type. That's, that is now getting yourself in trouble with God mm -hmm. because now you're going to challenge or dismiss certain aspects of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught and you're going to get yourself in trouble with God. That's the first thing, Sister Angelica, <laughs> that God, when he introduces himself to us in the Quran, what are the first words in chapter two after chapter one, which is a prayer? I. Allah am the best knower. Mm. See, right there, the believer has to accept that he's the best knower in everything. Yes. Then it tells us this book there is no doubt in it. it is a guide for those who keep their duty who believe in the unseen keep up prayer see now you have these five principles of faith mm -hmm. that if i believe that allah is the best knower i don't question god I may have questions, <laughs> but I don't question God. Yes. See, I may want greater understanding in certain things, but I'm not going to challenge my God because I've already accepted he's the best Noah. The Savior is the best Noah. He is Allah, the supreme being. He differs from us in that he has a superior knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in all things. And think about what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. He knows the beginning and the ending of all things. Mm. So don't come with scholarship of this world. Don't come to Elijah Muhammad, Louis Farrakhan, Master Fahd Muhammad with what you read out of a book from this one or that one. And now you're going to lift them as the experts in a certain field that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the minister 
have already spoken to and in. Mm. That gets you in trouble with God because now you're rebelling. Now you're hindering. I think that's the term or word you use. How does it hinder us? Well, mm -hmm. it hinders you greatly because now you are in rebellion to God and dis. So, again, sorry for the long answers, but I look forward to part two. <laughs> or three. <laughs> Minister Ishmael, you do not have to say sorry. <laughs> Everybody keeps telling me that, even my teacher. Says, Son, you don't have to tell your audience, I'm sorry, It's I'm going a little long. Just keep, finish what Allah has given you yes. the spirit to say. You're speaking on him and imparting his word. So, don't apologize. Yes. But I'm I'm respectful of time as we are <laughs> taught. And I would love to come back and we can <laughs> take this uh, further. But it's a great show. And the healing is in the spirituality or the spirit. And that is obtained or attained in our relationship with Allah and believing in his word. Yes. I, Allah, am the best Noah. When you believe in his word, have faith in his word, love his word, then the word, when you read it, it unleashes power. It unleashes energy. It unleashes light that bursts in your own being as you drink in the word, take in the word, it's medicine, it's healing, it's food, it's nourishment on the physical level, on the spiritual level, the mental, the intellectual, it's all in the word, but the believer has to take something to that word, mm. otherwise the word will not unleash the Power that's contained in it, it will only release and unleash itself when you and I take the requisite faith and love to the word. Some people read it and they they don't get much out of it. Mm -hmm. They read it and they may intellectualize the word, but the word is coming from the mind and the heart of God. Yes. And when you and I take faith and love to his word, we start unpacking. No, that's not the best word. Unleashing. That is yes. the best word. Yes. Just unleashing the power that is in the word. But no faith, no power. No love, no energy. It all depends on the quality of heart that we take to the word of God, the revelation and teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad to affect our condition on the mental, spiritual, moral, and physical uh, um, uh, stage or levels of our human development and growth. May Allah bless you, bless your audience. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and I look forward, Allah willing, to coming back on your show in the near future. <laughs> we don't have to wait till next year. We don't <laughs> have to wait till the winter. We don't even have to wait till the fall. Just call my office and we'll set it up. And inshallah, uh, I will be honored to accept the invitation again. Yes, yes, yes. All praises are due to a lot. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Ishmael, for joining me today. Um, I do, I do want to say to my audience, if I did not get to your questions, inshallah, 
um, if I connect back, when I connect back with uh, the minister, Minister Ishmael, um, we will try to get to those questions. But I just want to thank you again, Minister Ishmael, for joining me today. This was thank so you. beautiful. Thank Th you for the honor. Yes, Keep yes, up yes. The great work. <laughs> yes. Keep on affecting the healing. And keep on administering the medicine that mm. is the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless all who listen today. If I made a mistake in the, the representation of him and the word that he gave us, I ask Allah to forgive me for any mistake that I may have made, but I pray that Almighty God, Allah, will heal all of us that are struggling, all of us who are afflicted. It all depends, brothers and sisters, on the quality of our heart, the quality of our faith is what determines the quality of the healing that will affect the condition and bring us from an impaired state to an unimpaired state that we can be whole and sound, full of life, full of joy, full of happiness. Life is to be lived in accordance with the will of Allah. Thank you. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you all for joining us and we leave you as we came. Assalamu alaikum. Peace, healing, and light.